Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside. Like Riot Blockchain, before it shot up 10,090%. Digital Turbine, before it shot up 789%. Overstock.com, before it shot up 1,050%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Jacob. Right now, you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to PowerGagePreview.com for a free look. Again, that's PowerGagePreview.com. Welcome to Making Money. This is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays, everybody. Glad to be back in the studio. Glad to have a live show coming at you once again. Our first show of 2023. We're going to dive in and just kind of wrap up what happened to markets in the last week of trading. Take a look ahead at 2023. And then we're going to dive into electric vehicles. What this year holds, what the tax incentives can be, and then taking a look at the big three, Tesla, Rivian, and Ford, which stock will come out on top. All that more coming up right now on Making Money. Thanks again for joining Making Money. This is Matt McCall. It is January 3rd, 2023. It's crazy. I, I remember saying, wow, I can't believe it's already April of 2022. And now we're already into 2023. That year went fast. But I will say this. I'm glad it's behind us. Let's move on to a great 2023. Uh, it, it was a kind of a wild year for a lot of different reasons, uh, including the stock market. Obviously, we know the market took a bit of a hit. We had the S&P down 19.4% in 2022. That was its worst yearly loss since 2008. Uh, we had the NASDAQ down 33.1%. Uh, so basically losing a third of its value uh, during the 12 months of 2022. The Dow held up much better, down about 8.8%. Uh, but again, uh, you take a look at the indices overall. You take a look at some individual stocks, uh, such as Meta, which is Facebook, down over 60%. Tesla, down over 60%. You had some really big, um, and when I say big, some of the largest companies in the world uh, losing uh, nearly two-thirds of their value, some even more. It was a bit of an unprecedented year for sure. And just because the calendar flipped doesn't mean suddenly things are going to change. Uh, you know, it's important when a calendar flips, obviously. Uh, but it doesn't mean for the stock market that things will change uh, immediately. With that being said, historically, when there is a down year like we had last year, uh, the odds are next year will be up. But there, are been, there have been consecutive down years, obviously, uh, throughout history. So it's not a, a guarantee, though I do see a potential bottom here in the first quarter of 2023 uh, due to peer valuations. Uh, due to the fact that I believe the Fed is going to come very close to stopping by the end of the first quarter, if not stopping raising interest rates by the end of the first quarter. Um, I think inflation will dramatically come down during the first quarter. Um, so those three things kind of combined, I think, are going to be enough to get investors really sliding some money that's sitting at record levels on the sidelines right now, sitting at record levels of bearishness right now, and start getting the tide to turn. I don't think we have a V-shaped recovery, which we had after the COVID sell-off, where you come down and go right back up. That was a different scenario. Uh, I, I don't see that happening, but I do see a, a very nice rally at some point during this year, where I believe the S&P at some point will be up 20% from where we started uh, today uh, and uh, by at some point during the year. I don't know where it ends at in 12 months, because I don't know what happens in that 12-month time frame. But I do see a, a, a potential for a 20% rally. And to give you an idea... <clears throat> About 20% rallies. I want to, to show you a chart here really quick. And this, this takes a look back, uh, as you can see here, uh, the S&P going back to 1950. And these are the um, yearly gains. <clears throat> Obviously, you can see gains of 20% or more are this gold color. And you know everything else is in blue. And you can see, first of all, you look down here, there's not many really big down years. Uh, we just had a pretty big down. And obviously, 08, that was when we had uh, the great financial crisis. Uh, and then early 2000 was the tech bubble. Then we go all the way back to uh, 74, which was similar situation we're having now with inflation. 
Um, so you, you don't see <clears throat> oftentimes where you really have um, these down years consecutively. One time was back in uh, early 70s with the inflation, which we're dealing with right now. Uh, you can see early 2000s, the tech uh, crash, um, tech bubble. Again, that, that was really one off that we're not even close to what we're seeing as far as valuations that we saw in early 2000, late 99. And then you can see in 08, we only had one year down. So then you look at the gold. Those are all 20 plus year gains. And it's about over 27% of the time since 1950. So you're looking at what, 72 years that the S&P is up over 20%. So again, if when I say 20%, that's the end of the year. I'm not even saying we end the year at 20%. If I said at some point we get 20% gain. So if you're bought at the end, uh, you know, the end of the last day of 2022, or you buy, let's say, in the open this morning, we're up in, we're going to up a little bit. I believe at some point you're up 20%. Do we go straight up 20%? Absolutely not. I still think we could have some weakness between now and then, which would make your gain even bigger if we did that 20% clip. But I just want to throw that out there. And that's, that's kind of my view looking forward right now. Uh, I do think that we kind of have a bit of a rocky first couple of months. But after that, I think we're going to have a great buying opportunity uh, in these probably first two months, in my opinion. But again, I'll let the market deal me the hand and I'll play the hand that's dealt. And we'll see what happens at that point. Now, you know, I, I want to take a look and do some different shows. And I want to take a look today at the electric vehicle uh, landscape right now. You know, this mega trend has been a favorite of mine for many, many years. Uh, I wrote a book back in 08. It was released in uh, early 09, right at the market bottom of the great financial crisis. It was called The Next Great Bull Market. And in there, I had different chapters on different themes uh, from everything from uh, water uh, as a theme, uh, which that one didn't, it kind of played out. The stocks are still up pretty big, but didn't play out exactly as I thought. Uh, one of them was uh, the future transportation. And one of the stocks I highlighted was Tesla. <clears throat> if we go back and take a look at you know where Tesla was at that point versus uh, where we're at here today, uh, it, it's a different story. I mean, Tesla was obviously um, much lower than it is today. It got up to a $1 trillion company uh, and is still by far uh, the leader uh, when it comes to uh, electric vehicles. And keep in mind, Tesla wasn't even publicly traded when I published that book. And if you would have bought uh, Tesla you know, back on the, the first day of trading there, First week of trading, split adjusted was at about a buck a share. It hit over 400 um, late 2021. So you could see how much money you would have made, you know, going in hindsight, of course, 2020. I wasn't saying anybody even did that, but just to give you an idea of, of what was going on there. So I want to take a look at, at really where we're going from here, because even though electric vehicles have come a far way uh, since 2008, 2009, when I wrote the, that book. We have a long way to go. And that was 15 years ago, give or take. You know, right now, according to, according to Bloomberg NEF, which uh, they do a lot of great work on uh, transportation, uh, a lot of good research, that um, we take a look right now and the as of May of 2022, so about six, seven months ago, the penetration, glo global penetration for electric vehicles is sitting at 3%. 97% are still powered by fossil fuels, gasoline. So we obviously have a huge, huge upside with electric vehicles, if you believe in this. Uh, Bloomberg, the same uh, company, believes by 20, 2030, that number will jump to 28%. So you could do simple math. That's about 9x uh, from here over the next seven years. That'd be a, a huge upside potential, a huge opportunity for investors. By 2040, they believe that number could hit 58%. And then obviously <clears throat> keep increasing from there. Um, the problem that, that a lot of the EVs have had this year, and a lot of them have gotten hit, and even, even in companies that aren't considered potentially electric vehicle companies, but are traditional uh, vehicle companies, but are working on electric vehicles. Because I don't know one uh, large car company not having an electric division. I mean, just that's where we're going. So otherwise, you'd be basically counting the days until you shut your doors. So basically, they're all doing it. And if you look at the returns uh, of some of the stocks, you know, the top performing publicly traded of the larger um, vehicle companies uh, was Ferrari. That symbol race, R-A-C-E, it was only down 18%. I said only down 18% for 2022. Stellantis, STLA down 25%. Toyota down 26%. That symbol's TM. And then you jump into the mid-30s. So they greatly outperformed, or sorry, underperformed the S&P 500, which was down 19.4%, uh, 
And <clears throat> if you took the average, probably in line with the S P or the Nasdaq, which is down thirty three point one percent. So they've they've taken a bit of a hit, and a big reason for that is it's a very capital intensive uh, business model. And by that I mean you can't just go out and create a software. Microsoft does costs a lot of money to do that, but then every time you sell it, you're making money off it. It's a great business plan. Building a car is very capital intensive. It's expensive. It takes a lot of labor, a lot of manpower, a lot of parts from all over the world. There's been supply chain issues the last couple of years since COVID hit. We've had labor issues. We've had issues uh, with COVID in China. Tesla having shut down in Shanghai twice this year, their plant over there. So you're, you have interest rates going up, which hurts people borrowing money to buy vehicles. And inflation is, is, is resulting in parts for these cars to cost more. And we've talked about a lot over the last year. Used and new car prices have been going up. So it has really been a perfect storm uh, against the auto stocks in the last 12 plus months or so. And uh, that's why we've seen them get hit so much. Now, if we take a look back, the first EV, believe it or not, was introduced in 1889 by a gentleman by the name of William Morrison. You know, by 1899, a short 10 years later, electric vehicles were the most popular car in the United States. And about 90% of all New York City taxis were electric vehicles. Believe it or not, at 1899, right in the turn of the century, electric vehicles were leading the charge. We look ahead 120 some odd years later, and the penetration is still only 3% globally. So what the hell has happened? Well, in 1913, you probably remember a gentleman by the name of Henry Ford. His assembly line came out and was able to build a gas car in 90 minutes. Cheaper, faster, it basically put EVs out of business. Um, and there may be a conspiracy theory there that they wanted to push what was needed for gasoline cars, which is fossil fuels. The bottom line is it killed EVs. So EVs are now making the return. Uh, and obviously that was really led. I mean, Toyota came out with hybrids, um, GM came out as well years ago, but Tesla really kind of put EVs, pure electric vehicles on the map, in my opinion. And believe it or not, in the next five years, 200 new models are set to launch. 200 new electric vehicle models are set to launch in the next five years. And um, if you take a look at some of the, the largest uh, companies out there, you take a look at uh, Tesla's number one, and number two is Boyd. Uh, which is a BYDDF. It's a uh, Chinese company, uh, which Warren Buffett invested in many, many years ago. And that's the second largest right now. So, but, but Tesla is still the leader uh, by far out there. And um, we talk about capital intensive, and I'm not going to get into this today, but I will do a show on this uh, this quarter at some point, maybe in this month, is the most expensive part of an electric vehicle is the battery. And that is because um, we need very large batteries to go into uh, the vehicle to power them. Uh, battery technology is forever changing and we're looking for um, new technologies, really. I think solid state batteries will probably likely be the future of uh, batteries, large batteries at least. Uh, and we'll see how that plays out, but that's years away. So right now we're still using, for the most part, lithium ion batteries and the uh, materials that go into that, the lithium, the cobalt, the nickel, all becoming very expensive, which makes the battery very expensive as well. And we, we've seen a lot of stories about that. I've talked about that in the past, but I would like to dive into batteries at some point in a future show here for you. Now, looking ahead to 2023, we do have the uh, Inflation Reduction Act, known as the IRA, jumping into play here. The tax credit uh, for an EV is $7,500. It's divided into two $3,750 um, installments. And that will apply to um, you get your first 3,700 if at least 40% of the minerals of the battery, I just talked about the, the minerals, powering the vehicle come from the U.S. or a country having a free trade agreement with the U.S. The other 3,750 will only be uh, applied to your potential credit if at least 50% of the battery components come from the U.S. or from countries with free trade agreement with the U.S. So really pushing for U.S.-based batteries. And right now, a lot of the materials that come to come in, that are put into batteries uh, come from areas such as the, the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo, obviously not on the good list. China, obviously not on the good list. So 
this could be tricky and it's something that if you're looking for the incentive, you're going to have to ask about. But again, $7,500 is a big incentive if you're looking out to, to buy a new car. And just to keep in mind that SUVs, pickup trucks, and vans, all that costs more than $80,000 are excluded. So it's got to be a lower price vehicle. And consumers with higher income also excluded. Uh, and some cars must less cost at least less than $55,000. So there's a lot of uh, different angles you have to look to get to full $7,500. Uh, but apparently this should be around for many, many years. I mean, it could always change from administration to administration, but that was passed in the Inflation Reduction Act and should be a bit of a boost, at least this year, in my opinion, uh, for people looking to uh, really compare electric vehicles versus gas powered vehicles, especially on the lower end. I'm not talking about that very high end, but on the lower end of the spectrum, I think would be actually really good uh, for the market. So now let's dive into uh, three stocks. The three stocks I want to keep an eye on when it comes to electric vehicles this year. First, we're going to start with the leader. How do we ignore it? And that is Tesla. Tesla's heading into the year worth about $388 billion. Keep in mind, the first trading day of January of last year, basically one year ago, is around $1.23 billion, $1.24, sorry, trillion dollars. So it's fallen quite a bit, down 65% in the year of 2022 basically lost two thirds of its value. It is still the electric vehicle global market share leader with about 13.7%. Um, it's still, you know, really, really big, um, but it's, it's, it's come down about 8% from its high in 2020. So it's lost, it was, it was up closer to like the low twenties, but still at 13.7% of the entire global market of electric vehicles are Teslas. That's a huge number. The question that comes up oftentimes is, will that number remain that high? I mentioned already, there's 200 new models set to launch in the next five years of electric vehicles. I don't think it remains that high. But that being said, I also mentioned we're only at 3% penetration. So as the penetration increases, the amount of vehicles, the raw number increases, that for Tesla to increase their sales by pretty solid double digits, they can, they can lose market share. And it's going to happen, but their number of growth, their growth number will continue to grow. We'll talk about that number here in a second. Um, so the numbers just came out on Monday when the market was closed for the fourth quarter. And um, they came out with the fourth quarter with record deliveries of 388,000 vehicles. Uh, however, uh, that was a little lower than expected. Uh, so, um, the stock, uh, the, the stock market was closed, but of course people were bashing, uh, Elon Musk on that. And, uh, the stock market here opens, we're taping some of it earlier, opens in about seven minutes and Tesla's trading down right now. We'll see long, long day ahead of us, but trading down a little bit right now. Um, but that's what happened in 2020, uh, uh fourth quarter of 2022, a little bit lower, uh, than expected again, um, I'm not worried from quarter to quarter. I'm more expect, I'm more important to be looking out further. Um, but again, it was record deliveries, uh, which is still impressive uh, for Tesla. For the entire year of 2022, they delivered 1.31 million vehicles. That's up about 40% over the year before. That sounds very good. However, in the beginning of the year, uh, they thought there was going to be about 1.34 million, so a little bit lower than expected. Again, people love to look at the negative. You keep in mind, they had to uh, shutter their Shanghai factory twice due to COVID regulations. Uh, you take that away, this most likely almost hits it pretty damn easy. <clears throat> and if we take a look at how it's doing here in the U.S., folks, you know, the market share in the third quarter of electric vehicles, Tesla had 61%, 61% in the U.S., you take a look around, there's Teslas everywhere. I remember a few years ago, you could barely find a Tesla. They're everywhere now. I don't see that trend ending. They also introduced in the fourth quarter their first semi-truck. That's going to be a big market for them. And eventually autonomous, I think, will be a very, very big market for them. So we take a look at revenue. So in 2020, it had $31.5 billion. This year, once the numbers come out, looking for 82.9, let's call it $83 billion. Two years from now, 2024, looking for $144 billion. Earnings per share, last year, $2.26 a share. This year, looking for $4.12. By 2024, looking for nearly $7. The forward P/E ratio on, on, on 
Tesla right now is 22 and a half. Four price of sales is 3.4. Those aren't cheap based on the market. That being said, based on the growth of this company and the potential of this company, it is cheap. That being said, Tesla stock, and we'll take a look at it right now, is trading just off a 52-week low. And if we zoom out a little bit further, we'll just see how far it's rolled over. As I mentioned, back in late 2020, 2021, over $400 a share, we've given back all the gains, we're all the way back down to where we were in 2020. So when I look at a stock chart like this, and I look at the fundamentals of Tesla, I think it's cheap. But you have to learn the stock market, you learn pretty quickly when you lose money, the stocks can get cheaper. That pendulum swings from overbought, overvalued, to oversold, undervalued, and goes dramatically up. So I don't know where this bottom is. Do I like Tesla going out long term? I do like it here. But again, again, nothing here is a buy or sell recommendation. Never is on this show. Just to put that out there. But I look at Tesla and I think it's inexpensive. That being said, there could be more rough times definitely in, in the near future. And a lot of that has to do with Elon Musk, who I'm a big fan of. But everything that's going on on Twitter right now, that's been a bit of a debacle. Keep in mind, he sold $39 million worth of shares since November 2021. Um, and his net worth this year has dropped down to $137 billion. Not that I feel bad for the guy at all, but it's down $130 billion. Um, looking ahead, you have the tax credit, I think, that could help this year. The cyber truck, we should start getting more news on that coming out uh, as we go look ahead. Um, and then the goal for 2023 is just under 2 million units. Uh, and as I mentioned, we came at 1.31. So again, that's that's still huge double-digit growth. And a goal by 2030, if they can hit this, is 20 million vehicles per year. If it gets anywhere near that, this stock is a, a huge bagger for you from, from now until that. A lot can get in the way. A lot of things can happen. But again, you got to look out big picture. And I think uh, Tesla's got a bright future ahead of it. So now let's take a look at Ford, symbol F, uh, about a $47 billion company. They lost 42% last year. And, you know, Ford obviously is not as big into EVs as Tesla. However, uh, they do have the F-150 Lightning, uh, which launched this past year in 2022. Um, and, you know, the F-150, the regular F-150, you know, the gas power, number one selling vehicle in the United States. If they can convert them to the Lightning, the electric version of it, which I will tell you, about six or seven months ago, I sat inside an uh, F-150 Lightning. It was at an auto show and people weren't allowed to touch it. Thank goodness I had a press pass. I was able to get inside it. It is a hell of a vehicle. I've never owned a truck. I don't know if I foresee myself owning a truck. I did put money down on a cyber truck years ago. I think like a 200 bucks or something. Um, but it is a nice vehicle and I think it's going to do well. And to give you an idea just how popular the regular F-150 is, the regular and F-150, Ford sells over 100 per hour and over a million a year of the regular F-150. Whew, that's pretty amazing. Through November, we've sold, or we, Ford has sold 13,258 F-150 Lightnings. Compare that to the 1 million sold a year for the regular. There's a lot of upside here, obviously, that we can see. Ford believes that by mid-2023, so mid this year, uh, that they will be able to be uh, at a pace of producing 150 of the uh, Lightning F-150s per year. So that would be a, a nice pickup in it. In November, uh, the company delivered 6,255 EVs. That was up about 102% from the same month of 2021. It's the fifth consecutive month that the Ford EV sales have grown at triple digit rate. So you're, you're starting to see a pickup. We're, we're starting at a very low level for, but we're starting to pick up. Of that number, about 3,539 were Mustang, Mustang Mach E's. In 2062 were the Ford F-150 Lightning. So it's a low number. Uh, the Mustang numbers were up. F-150 Lightnings, they were actually down month over month where... Uh, the Mustangs continue to go up. <clears throat> All that being said, uh, Ford says that it's enough F-150 Lightnings or orders, I should say, order pre-orders to fill production through 2024. So you have a lot of people sitting there waiting for it. And again, 
This is the most popular vehicle, the gas version in the United States. So I think we're going to see big, big demand for uh, this coming out of Ford. Through November, uh, year to date, for Ford in general, the entire company, they sold 53,752 electric vehicles. That's the second most in the U.S. behind Tesla. But look at the difference in Tesla. Tesla did 1.31 million for the entire year. Ford at 53 and change, 53,000 and change through November. Probably going to come in close to 60,000. That is a, that's a big difference. And that's, again, why Tesla is where they are and why they command 61% of, of the EV market in the United States. But I think Ford does have some upside potential. You don't see it in the estimates for the numbers right now. The revenue in 2020 was $127 billion. Uh, this year, looking for $148 billion. So that's a nice kind of pickup for a company, that, you know, an older company such as uh, Ford. Uh, 2024, looking for $155 billion. So not really big growth in the next two years. Earnings per share last year, buck fifty-nine, buck seventy-two this year. Two years from now, $1.82. So again, very little growth top and bottom. That being said, there's two other metrics that I think are important. One is the fundamentals, and that's the four PE ratios at 6.5, very low. Forward price of sales, 0.3, very low. That means there's upside potential just to get back to <clears throat> a little bit more respectable numbers uh, for the stock to come up. And it pays a dividend right now of 5.16%, which is always a nice kicker to put on top of a stock like this. So let's take a look at Ford stock here real quick. Uh, as you can see, a bit of a different chart than Tesla. What I do see here is that we hit a low in July, down around the $11 level, uh, end of September, early October, and then again, the last week in December, keep holding on to 11 level. And uh, today we're just opened up a few pennies uh, to start the new year around $11.72 a share. If it breaks 11, there's a chance that this stock five falls another 10 to 15%. If it holds, it could continue to rally up. My concern is every rally has been lower highs, and that's not a good sign. Uh, so we need to watch this $11 level uh, right now. Again, nothing here is a buy or sell recommendation, but I wouldn't jump into four at this point because... I think there is a little bit of risk. It does break 11 in the first couple of months of this year if we do see another leg lower in the overall market. And number three is Rivian. <clears throat> this is kind of the, the new guy in a block. And uh, symbol is R-I-V-N. It's a $17 billion company. It came out as an IPO uh, a couple of years ago. I uh, got a lot of uh, uh, praise in, in 2021 when it went public in November. Opened up uh, at around $100 a share, right up to about $180. Came all the way down uh, below $20. We're sitting at $18.76 right now. It was down 82% in 2022, uh, but still a $17 billion company. Uh, this company focuses on SUVs and trucks, not sports cars or cars, but SUVs and trucks. What I like about this company is it's really the first to market um, with, with a good pickup truck, good electric pickup truck. Purely electric company, just like Tesla. Uh, the truck market is big. The orders here are robust. And I think that bodes very well for a company uh, the size of Rivian. Uh, it has about 115,000 pre-orders right now. I uh, call it a backlog in the U.S. and Canada. Um, and on top of that, it's predict it's, it's not predicting, it's, it has pending, I should say, an order with Amazon for 100,000 delivery trucks. So you put that together, you're about 215,000 um, pre-orders between Amazon's vans and the trucks and the SUVs uh, together. And if you take a look at the delivery of vehicles, I just mentioned 215,000 between just those two, the pre-orders of just Amazon and, and the truck and SUV, 215,000. The goal this year, we didn't have the numbers yet for December, but the goal this year is to deliver 25,000 vehicles. Goal next year is for about 50,000 vehicles. So we get, they got to really step it up. And, you know, that's where I talk about capital intensive. It costs money to build these factories. It costs money to get new employees. This isn't something you just start overnight, folks. This is a very, very um, difficult business to enter. And that's why many people in Tesla entered the car business back in the day thought it would never work. You get the big three. It doesn't matter. We don't need, we don't need another car company. Uh, but that being said, Rivian's been able to raise a lot of cash. Uh, their balance sheet's sitting right around four, $14 billion at the end of the third quarter. Um, <clears throat> if you take a look at uh, 2022, um, you know, the company, the, the problem is that the company is, is losing big money. Uh, during the third quarter, 
They had revenue of $536 million, but a net loss of $1.72 billion. And that's, that's where there's a concern with Rivian. That's why it's down 82%. The concern is that even though it's bringing in real money now, you know, in 2021, it had $55 million in sales because it just started selling its vehicles. 2022, the estimates for $1.76 billion. The estimate for 2024, just two years ahead, is $10.83 billion. So you can see the huge upside. The problem is, when's the company going to make money? Will the company ever make money? And, and that, that is something that we need to weigh when we look at stocks right now, because as far as I can see looking out, the company is likely not going to make uh, much money here uh, going forward. Um, you know, the, the chance of it turning a profit in the near future is not very good, even though revenue by 2025 should be over $15 billion, and it's a $17 billion company. As I mentioned, the good news is it's sitting on about $14 billion heading into this quarter, uh, this past quarter, um, net loss of 1.7, as I mentioned, in the third quarter. Kind of just put that out, you know, say it's, you know, last eight quarters. That's a two-year run rate if it stays around there. However, sales will be picking up quite a bit. So hopefully the net loss starts to uh, come down a little bit. But it's building its second U.S. plant in Georgia, expected to be open by 2026. So obviously that is going to be extremely expensive, um, you know. And along that way, they're going to continue to lose quite a bit of money. So the good news, though, as far as production the production rate's gone from about an average of 78 vehicles per week in the fourth quarter of 2021 to about 566 per week in the third quarter of 2022. So you're seeing it really pick up. And as they bring on uh, the more uh, facilities they're building, it's really going to go through the roof. And they have a, a big, large battery pack that they're working on. Won't be delivered till next year, 2024. But that should come in around 400 mile range. That's pretty impressive. The range right now is about 314 miles. But 400 miles would be extremely impressive. Uh, and again, let's take a look here at Rivian stock before we let you go. And you can see one public had its big jump up here in November of last, uh, 2021 and just been rolling down. And again, this is because its stock's not making money, uh, even though it's seeing revenue explode higher. Uh, we are in a stock market situation right now where people want to see either profitability or path to profitability. We don't have that yet with Rivian. I think Rivian could be a huge player in the EV market going forward. But again, um, what happens in the stock in the next couple of years, it's tough, tough. The downside is big and the upside is probably even bigger if it makes it. But the downside is big, folks. I mean, it's at 17 billion. It could fall to 10 billion and still look fine. And that's, you know, it's a big loss from here. So uh, watch this one carefully. Uh, don't get too aggressive with it. But again, nothing here is a buy or sell recommendation. But just wanted to put this out there. These are three EV stocks I'm keeping an eye on for this year and beyond. Tesla, Ford, and Rivian. If you guys have a topic you want me to talk about, a mega trend that you want to take a look at, or stocks you want me to compare, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share the video. But again, Happy New Year, everybody. Let's make 2023 the best year yet. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful week. I'm Matt McCall. And that was making money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.